Hi, my name is Maximilian and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to film soap bubbles and how to create that buttery smooth footage. Welcome back to the giant world of tiny things and the second part of our soap bubble tutorial. In the next few minutes I'm going to share all my tips and secrets on filming soap bubbles and I'll take you behind the scenes of my production A Film of Color. My first and most obvious but also most important tip is to double check everything before you start filming. Make sure you really like your lighting, that your camera settings are fine and that there are no distractions in the background. Also make sure that you zoom in to 100% in live view when you focus so that you really nail your shot. It's just so much more fun to get it right in camera than to fiddle around in post and try to make things work that really don't. And of course this is the most basic thing in the world but believe it or not it happened to me and I could not use some beautiful material that I got because I did not take the time to double check settings and recorded it in a low resolution. So all the material I'll show you today was shot at 50 frames per second in 1080p which are the highest parameters possible on my Canon 6D Mark II. If you got a camera with better specs then make sure to utilize them. My camera settings were 1 100th of a second for crisp image quality and f22 for a decent amount of depth of field. ISO 1600 to just get a proper exposure. The only exception to that are the wider shots where I shot at a 50th of a second with ISO 800. And with the wider viewing angle of these sequences a 50th of a second still makes for a tag sharp image. To film my footage I used a full frame camera with a telephoto lens on a full stack of extension tubes. Later in the same shoot I added this 2x teleconverter which allowed me to get even closer and shoot my macro sequences. And the image quality with this 2x converter attached is doubtlessly a little bit less than without it but in my eyes it's still solid. And of course as we increase the magnification ratio we naturally decrease our depth of field until we're left with this tiny little sliver of focus which just isn't enough for filming. So I shot at f32 to even f64 to film these macro sequences properly. And if you're wondering about that f64 f-stop that's because I'm using a 2x teleconverter which naturally adds two stops to your dialed in aperture. So f16 becomes f32, f32 becomes f64 and that causes a lack of light as well and to balance that out I just used auto ISO and shot these sequences at a 50th of a second as well. Filming on a full frame sensor at 1080p I really didn't worry too much about my noise levels. And just in case you're wondering why I'm using a overkill setup like this instead of an ordinary macro lens, the reason is that a telephoto lens with extension tubes is going to yield a really nice extended working distance and that will be a critical factor when we try to maximize the depth of field by aligning the surface of our soap bubble with the sensor plane because this way we will catch a reflection of our front element right in the frame we're recording and to cut out this reflection we need to offset our alignment a little bit and trade in some depth of field. And how much that offset needs to be depends on the working distance and of course a longer working distance helps to maintain a better alignment and a larger depth of field. And as you can see and here I'm running out of breath, this rig is really heavy and there are lots of mounts included, which is why I decided to support the mounts and take the stress off of them by mounting the camera and the lens to this flash bracket. It also allows me to mount the whole camera rig right at the center of gravity to a nice and sturdy ball head tripod. And if you're using a ball head tripod as well, a good trick is to just fasten the screw off the ball head a little bit, just enough to give your camera and your hands enough support to cut out shaking but still allow for fluid motion. And while we're already making that bridge it's probably a good time to start talking about camera movement so let's dive right into it and start with the easy stuff, panning.
Panning is a function that pretty much any tripod supports and the beauty of panning shots is that they can be easily executed without even shifting focus. Simply pre-focus your lens on a point slightly behind the edge of the bubble that's closest to you and dial in a narrow aperture to make sure you nail focus throughout your entire take and you won't have to worry about following focus or anything like that. For most other movements, especially the ones involving vertical motion, you will need to pull focus as the distance to your subject changes. I found the ideal way to support my camera as I do so, to mount it to a ball head tripod and loosen up the screw just enough to allow for smooth motion. Then I support my lens with the one arm and the camera body with the other. And this allows me to smoothly pull focus and operate the focusing dial as the distance to my subject changes. And with a bit of practice this really allows to track points of interest and turbulences in the soap film nicely. And if you're using a smaller lens that does not quite fit a hand like this and is awkward to operate and support like that, then a really good hack is to use a jar opener as a follow focus device and even though it doesn't quite fit this lens to demonstrate, the idea is to place it on the focusing dial and that gives you a bit of a lever that really allows to operate the dial much more smoothly and track motion and points of interest much more precisely within that soap film. And if all that sounds like too much work or you just don't have the right equipment, don't worry, I've got you covered. In this next section I'm going to share another little macro hack that allows for super buttery smooth footage and all you need is a tripod, not even a good one. trying to show you here and you probably already guessed it in that past sequence that I've shown you is a flat film of soap and as opposed to spherical bubbles flat films really have a couple great advantages. First of all because of the air pressure that's trapped underneath and because they don't get to develop a center of gravity they last for up to hours and are a lot of fun to shoot. Second of all you can manipulate them very easily simply by rotating your container and tilting it slightly and that will cause interesting streams and patterns in the film. But the second and even greater advantage is of course that a flat subject like this requires much less depth of field than a spherical bubble and therefore less light or a lower ISO. It's beneficial either way. Now let's talk about that hack I promised you. For super smooth video without any hassle, point your camera facing downwards and create one of these flat soap films I've just shown you. Make sure that your container is pretty much empty to avoid disturbing reflections in behind your soap film and place it underneath your lens. Now you're pretty much ready to start filming and to create super dreamy camera motion by gently moving and rotating your vase rather than the camera rig. This technique allows for incredibly steady shots and you can even control manipulate and predict the flow of the soap by the way that you're tilting the container and gravity does the rest. And that's how you create smooth motion in camera. But before we jump over to the last section of this video, the editing, there's one more sequence in my short film that I'd like to talk about and that's the opening sequence. This sequence with all these vertical downward streams going on was one of the hardest ones of the entire project. The reason for that is that for what I had in mind, which was a fairly large surface area with all these downward streams going on, I needed my film in a vertical orientation and a plastic container like this and any other kind of smooth material really won't work for this purpose because it doesn't hold the soap very well and it just flows right down and so in a vertical orientation it will pop after, I'm gonna say 25 seconds max depending on your recipe, maybe half a minute, but I was looking for a longer sequence, I wanted to be able to speed it up and play around and even if the film didn't pop I would still be using an enclosed container and therefore catch these annoying reflections on the rear wall and so my solution looks somewhat like this and you can see it's a very basic soap frame made from crafting wire and torn up cotton strips and I put on two layers of cotton strips which allow it to soak up enough solution to get in a solid minute or even two in one row of soap film. 
And on the bottom I've got this handy little loop that allows me to mount it to any generic hut or cold shoe and that comes in really handy because somehow I need to mount it too. To create the soap film I mounted this frame to a boom arm and used a rectangular plastic tank to apply the soap. This technique also allows me to pre-focus the camera so that it just needs a quick bit of fine tuning once the film is applied. These were some of the tricks that I used to create my film of color and I really hope that you found a couple tips and a bit of inspiration for yourself along the way too. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up, that would be a huge support for me and my channel. And in the next part of this video, which also is the last part, I'm going to share my editing process and if you edit in Premiere as well, make sure to stick around. I did all my editing in Premiere Pro and even though I'm far from being an expert, I learned a few things along the way that really helped me out. My editing computer here has 12 GB of RAM, which is not the world, but I thought it'd be enough, but it wasn't. The computer really struggled and fortunately there are a couple really simple tricks that had to improve the performance immediately. First of all, you can set your playback resolution from full resolution to a half or a quarter, which instantly improves the performance noticeably. In my case, that still was not quite enough, so I went and created proxy files for all my video sequences, and that allows Premiere to use low resolution alias files, which make it a lot easier on your RAM and your graphic card. Just don't forget to toggle them for the original files before you start exporting. But now let's talk about the fun part of editing. Cuts and transitions. In order to keep my video interesting, it was important to me to cut frequently but also to keep my transitions smooth and creative. I think my favorite transition would be the cross zoom function, I used it a whole lot and in order to keep it from looking too generic, I combined it with different other transitions such as dip to black or crossfade for example. My goal here was to make it appear as if I just zoomed in really quickly and then continue without an obvious jump between scenes. Another way to draft interesting transitions is to just have a play with different effects, such as a layer mask which I used for this transition. Another important thing to consider when cutting video is to create a flow that matches the audio. That's why I did my best to place cuts where they fit and to tie my footage in a way that syncs up well with the audio. For this purpose I used a lot of speed ramping in order to adjust the pace of motion according to the sound. And speed ramping in Premiere is really easy, just right click on the little yellow FX button on your video clip and select time remap speed. Now you're able to use the pen tool in order to create smooth gradients or an abrupt change of speed. Once all the cutting is done, there really is just one last thing left to do and that's color grading. To make this part easier for myself, I was cautious to keep my light source even across different sequences and to shoot everything in the same white balance. That means that now I can nest my entire sequence and I only have to apply the color grading once to the entire clip. And fortunately for us photographers, the color grading section of Premiere is designed pretty similar to Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw and some parts are essentially the same. This makes it easy to adjust your settings and I just did some very minor adjustments to improve the contrast and make the colors pop better. To finish off I applied the unsharp mask effect for just a tad more sharpness and then some slight noise reduction to keep the noise levels low.
Now I think I've got everything covered. If I haven't or if I left any questions open, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them as good as I can. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope you got some value out of it and that you may now feel inspired and prepared to explore this magical world of colors yourself. Thanks so much. Have a good day. It also allows me to mount it right at the center of gravity, which just makes for the smoothest possible footage when you move the camera around. <sighs> Almost. This thing is heavy. That is going to inevitably create... <clears throat> I was so close. To film my footage, I used my full... Fr And if all this sounds like too much work or you just don't And if all that sounds like too much work or you just don't have the right equipment, don't worry, I've got you covered. In the next section, so many outtakes. Hey, the bus leaves in like four minutes, I'm not gonna catch it now. Okay, you don't worry, I just got another one for the outtakes. <laughs> Nothing, never mind, I'll see you soon. No, I'm not coming. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I love you. <laughs> Bye. Mwah.